Hey, hello, hello. Hi. Hi, my name's Lisa, and this is Elric from we're from the Five Center of Qualities, and we have Karen from Frontline Five today uh, with our Let's Keep Chatting podcast. Hi, and welcome, Karen. Hi, and, and welcome to everybody as well. So good to be here. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to say that uh, this is on YouTube as well. So if you just want to read or to have captions, you can just click on the CC as well and you can get subtitles. Okay. Okay. Challenging, but you know, I'll bear that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this let, Let's Keep Chatting podcasts are all about talking to communities community on organizations around five and seeing how they cope uh, with what's been going on this year with the pandemic and also how um, they've been able to help people uh, connecting with uh, protected characteristics. I couldn't get that word out there, sorry. So <laughs> to this <laughs> It is a mouthful, protected characteristics, yes. Say it three times fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, welcome to basically our final episode for the year. Wow. Uh, so, hi, Karen. Uh, would you like to uh, give us, let everybody uh, have some background about Frontline Five, please? Sure. I'll, I'll just kind of kick off about... Um, Homelessness and Fife, just to give some some kind of context of which we work in. So, most years up 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 until around 2018-19, the number of homeless people in in terms of reported homelessness is around just under 2,000. However, on 18 and 19, that went beyond 2,000. And it rose by 10%. Now, to put that in perspective, our numbers are smaller than Scottish numbers, but Scotland's average went up 3%. Okay, so we went up more than, than the, but the proportion is smaller than Scotland, obviously, but it's still a rise. So that gives you a, a kind of notion of something has changed and something is going on. And therefore, all of the partners who work within the public social partnership of which we are one to tackle homelessness have now had to rethink and refocus what we do. So we're in the we're in the minute at the minute we're looking at a review of services as a partnership, but for Frontline Five, um, our services are uh, we're a wee bit unique in in the partnership in that we are five wide and we offer a what I would call a full service of of support in that we give um, preventive prevention support and assisting people who are in crisis and homelessness. So what that means on the ground is that uh, we have housing advice, which gives advice to anybody in the public to in regarding potential evictions or how to not be evicted. If you have any concerns about your rent or your tenancy, then, then we can solve and hopefully solve and support that, or at least at the very least direct you to other partners. So that's our prevention side. Plus we also go into schools to make people aware, young people aware that when they're leaving home, the kind of things you need to be aware of in terms of, you know, a tenancy, owning your tenancy, your responsibilities, and how to get help if need be. Mm -hmm. So we do that kind of work. And then there are people who will phone in and, and be in crisis. And we have a 24-7 service to that we support and we, we manage through Fife Council to make sure that people have a safe place to stay should, it, should they find themselves in a position where they need a safe, a safe, secure accommodation. And then at the other end of that, we also support people in their accommodation and in temporary accommodation to make sure they sustain their temp, their accommodation. So giving them, supporting them with life skills or budgetary skills or whatever, wherever it might be to be able to make sure that, that people can keep their homes. Because at the end of the day, what we want is people to be, to be able to live and sustain a home, not just a house, but a home. And that's really important. Mm -hmm. So that's a kind of tapestry of what we do. But I'm sure that's still a little vague. But uh, that's that's the summary I, I kind of roll so, out. So it's not just young people, though. You, you really work across different age groups, really. 
We do. We work with it. So the important aspect here is that anybody can become homeless at any time. Mm -hmm. Some people say we're only a paycheck away. And I think that probably is a real, a real statement now for many that they may be sitting at Christmas in particular and under COVID conditions thinking, can I get through Christmas? Can I get through to the next year? So mm -hmm. homeless can happen to anybody. So we are, we, we don't, we're not age specific. We are a universal service in that sense because it can happen to anybody, any individual, any families. That said, we do need to bear in mind that whilst it can happen to anybody, if you have more risk factors in your life in terms of what is likely to, to occur in your life experience, you're more likely to be at risk of homelessness. And that's just a sad spot. So we do have an emphasis on on meeting need of those most in need as well. Mm -hmm. um, as you can expect, I'm always full of questions. What 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 have you seen tend to be the, the risks, the factors that really have influenced, especially the rise as if as a rise. So what what seems to be so within five we have obviously um our the reflection of homelessness reflects the population in five. So the reflection is, is that we see less people uh, from ethnic minority backgrounds presenting. Mm -hmm. Now, that might not be that they are less likely to be homeless. They just don't present. And um, so that's a curious point that I'd like to make. We have up until recently more men between young people and then the mid age. So from 16, well, 17, 17, 18 to about 24. And then the uh 35 to 50 age range is what you'll see um, presenting in temporary accommodation. Mm -hmm. But we've also seen a rise in women and families. So things are changing. And I think that 10% that we were talking about, the increase, um, is probably paying a part to that. I think the real important aspect is if we look at crisis and, and, and in terms of protected characteristics, you are more likely to be um, risk of homelessness if you are unemployed and if you are suffering from any kind of disability or, or challenges in terms of mental well-being. And you also will be at risk if you um, maybe are in work but at, at low wage. So okay. there are a number of reports that We'll talk about this term intersectionality. So if you are someone who is in a low paid job and or under or unemployed and you might have a mental health um, concern in your family or as an individual and you might have another other um, characteristic, then you, you, you your risks increase. And that that's something that we need to be really, really aware of that when we're looking at supporting people that we understand the whole person and because it's not it's not to be judgmental um, to just because we know that these risks are, are um, at play in the population we can't assume that those are the ones at play for the individual that might present for help got it right so you, you do need staff to be able to work with all of these different circumstances and and so you need stuff that really have a lot of skills there to be able to because that's 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 as as how long is a piece of string there's so many things there <laughs> oh I, I i i welcome your statement there because um our our staff are 47 strong in frontline five and there's lots of other um organizations out there that do similar work but no matter who we are as an organization or any other organization that frontline team to us all is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Um, I, I, I also think that sometimes within it, we, we do lots of training and lots of support for our frontline staff, no matter whether it's us or other organizations. But I think we also forget the untapped inherent vocational skills that they have and their talents. Mm -hmm. So the talent to make someone feel at ease, to let people open up, and, you know, you can learn that, but if you have a natural affinity towards that, then, you know, that that is just an amazing um, skill to have and talent. So uh, I, I always focus in, in the team about making sure we have development plans and making sure people's needs in terms of training are met. But 
sometimes I think I can critique myself and pushing forward learning and development that we almost assume that that that's how we learn. But in actual mm -hmm. fact, our frontline team are rich in understanding the communities and 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 who is in the know and who who might be um, a spark for change and and who actually. Um, you know, they share information in a way that if we try to or or orchestrate it, we would actually just, Im <laughs> we'd probably implode. They naturally have an affinity to be out there and just just get stuck in and, and, and drive forward change for, for others. You know, they, they are truly amazing. So, yeah, yeah. Wow. See your staff, um, like, the way you said, like, you like to tap into their, you know, abilities that, you know, that might be able to help people a bit more. Do you, do you use these people and try and connect them with people that need the help? You know, because you know you might get people that are needing help but they don't want to open up to anybody. You know, so do you sort of connect your staff with, try and connect your staff with that type of person? So sometimes we try and match staff. But um, often is the case when you work in, in um, homelessness, you have to be very adept at being um, engaging and, and, and with open mind because we have to deal with those in crisis first. You, choice is important for the individual receiving. So if, if we don't connect with them, we often say to them, if we're not, if this person in front of you is not working for you, we can we can find another person who might have a better understanding, and that that's about being professional, isn't it? But mm -hmm. but for us to try and match would be trying to almost make a decision before we understand the complexity of the is issues that that the individual faces, and sometimes we're dealing with people who have an enormity over, they're overwhelmed with the enormity of the task at hand to try and get them through a difficult period. So listening to the emotional sense of where a person is at and the actual things that can be put in place, they're two different conversations, aren't they? They're about understanding how that person is receiving and understanding where they're at. And moving beyond that, once we have a, a, an emotional understanding to, well, what can we do together with you being informed about the choices that you can make and aspiring to the life that they want to live and that trying to make homelessness a one-off experience that will never happen again. That, that's one of the key things is when someone finds himself at crisis, we should try and see, see themselves as in a one-off chance to make this go away very quickly. That, that helps people move on. And so when we take that kind of approach, then we, we have to be open-minded to, to, to the individual. And then as you say, Lisa, if, if it is a chance that we are not getting a connection there that is meaningful, then we need to find out how we do that. So yeah, that's where that would come in. Wow. So uh, before we get into more detail about Frontline Fife, how are you coping with all this stress and the pandemic? You know, you know, have you been able, is it a matter of just getting on with it or, you know, other, you know, you feel stressed or anything? Especially this time of year. Oh, a... um, so, you know, I, I, I kind of always ask my staff that and no, and no one really, I've not had to ask that, answer that question myself recently. I'm on, I'm in the hot seat now. Um, uh -huh. I think my staff would tell you. So how you see yourself and how others see you are, are important things to bear in mind, right? Uh, I think in real honesty, I'm trying to put a very brave face on that. And I have good days and bad days. And uh, the bad days... Um, if my staff are listening right now, thanks, thanks for putting up with me on the bad day. <laughs> and and and, um, and my staff have bad days too, and I want to say I'm here for them. We're we're all in this together, and so I think just being able to have the opportunity to be asked the question is important in itself, <laughs> because then you realize that some weeks you have more bad days than others, and and but there's some real amazing stuff happening with the team. The team has done some uh, really amazing things in terms of dealing with crisis, that complexity of crisis, you know, the crisis is crisis no matter what, but mm -hmm. this crisis is, is adding uh, something extra and everyone is pulling towards that. And, and I think the only thing I can say is I, I, 
welcome everything and every effort that's put in, but I'm looking forward for people to get a break. I hope Christmas brings a break for some um, and a relief to just to be able to put your head down and know that the next day you're not fighting the good fight, but you're actually giving some energy back to yourself. Um, that's that's um that's that's really so I'm diverting my my the question if you notice Lisa away from myself. <laughs> God, <Yeah. that's> <laughs> no. I naturally do that. There you go. There you go. But um, that's it. right. You know, everybody needs to. You know, even though we put all this effort in in helping others, yeah. you've got to take that time for self care and everything. Literally you know, and charge, yeah. <laughs> charge and hopefully over the holiday break you know s some people out there can get this time yeah and, and i just hope everybody does so i hope for you too that you you get a break no no one is immune from this you know um i've heard it said that COVID is not discriminatory you, you know and um that's that's true to a certain extent and and if we accept that then we're all vulnerable aren't we we're all vulnerable and we all need to we need to be kind we need to be kind mm. yeah it, it, it's it's the year to be kind because mm -hmm. because we've seen like not just within the uk but you know all over the world how people have pulled together to help each other and you know and they're not caring about themselves they just want to help others that are probably less off the name kind of thing so but how how did you cope with um with, with a lockdown and since march i guess you your, your everyday has changed quite a lot. So, so yes, you still have frontline crisis work, but maybe the back office doesn't work in the same way. I don't know. Do you have pods or do you work remotely? Or they, how are you coping with the organization so, side of it? Yeah. So, so um, we we actually day one of COVID, we met together and we put our business continuity plan in place. So that was that made it feel safer. Yeah. Okay. That we had a bit of a roadmap. But, you know, we we are very thankful for the Scottish government's guidance that has come out, albeit it's quite lengthy. And we have we have really tried to because we're essential services. So we're we've been working throughout. Um, so we have not stopped. And I think the difficulty with essential services is that you can't have downtime. You must be ready for the next crisis that comes in. Mm -hmm. So we've tried to do supportive things and go for healthy walks and things like that. But, you know, I think in time we'll reflect on how much of the enormity of the task was. And I think, I, I'm going to be honest and upfront, we are now working on fatigue. Mm. And, and I think that's where the kindness has to happen for everybody, that we have to take breaks. So we're looking within the teams, for instance, we had our housing advice team, and we we're looking about how do we share the load of a, of a crisis conversation over the phone? Because if you're the one who's dealing with the phones that day, mm. to have four or five or six heavy phone calls is not good for your mental health, which means logically you'll not be able to take the next call and be and give your all for that. So we're looking at different ways of working. So we're working mobile. We're 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 taking short break, more short breaks, mm -hmm. and we're doing kind of like um, maybe a call with it's an extreme problem, which is really complex. That maybe one person will do part of it, and then the other person will do the next part. And we let the person know that this is how we have to work because of the enormity of the task. And we make sure that they agree with that with that approach. But we're looking at new ways of how do we how do we lighten that load so everybody can keep mm -hmm. going. Someone said to me with an emotional intelligence hat on, these people of wisdom, I love them, you know, they 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 come by your life every now and then. And then and, and it comes from anywhere. But this individual said, Do you know, Karen, you need to manage yourself and teams as if you were a furnace. And you need to give out that furnace needs to give out energy. But that furnace may not always be topped up and it could run dry. So you need to be aware of when you run dry mm -hmm. and when your team runs dry and your team members have to know when they run dry because that's when you have to decide that you can't give any more. You need to top up to be able to give more. Mm -hmm. And I think if life is a furnace, if you think that sounds quite dull, doesn't it? But, but if in this time of crisis, if you can think of yourself as a furnace, if you recognize in yourself put your hand up and say, my furnace is running dry. Then it's, we move to what can we do to get your furnace, you know, fueled up again to be able to move on. And I think that's the kind of approach we're trying to take. And then think 
innovatively of how we can get around that. Now, if everybody's furnace runs dry at one point, we've got a problem. <laughs> um, but chances are, some say, I have some in my tank. I'll keep going for you. <laughs> you know, that, that's the team. That's the team thing there. And communities have been really good, too. I mean, we have had people uh, in the community with, with enormous help saying, is there anything we can do to help you? And, you know, there's other kind of more focused, you know, approaches and food banks and whatever. But we've had people dump off, you know, lots of things uh, to give out to people and socks and whatever at this point in time. Generous donations that the churches have been immense in terms of opening up their hearts and their community to support as well. So, you know, that builds for, you know, up your furnace as well, just to know there's other people out there. Yourselves in terms of looking at, you know, you know, even just today's talk, you're building up my furnace again. You're making us uh, realize what wow. we're doing well. So thank you for building, <laughs> giving me energy. Thank you. Well, it's, it's, no, well, we, well we, we love d doing this. We need to know what's what's happening and the help that we do with each other, which is why, well, which is why we do this podcast because we, we've learned so much ourselves that uh, people basically started from scratch from new projects and just just went on. We, we need to do things now. So this is what uh, the big aim of this podcast is to actually have that word of mouth that we can't uh, unfortunately do as much as we wanted to do it on the screen, but. Thank you. That's great. So <laughs> great. Well, you know, you know, I'd love to be able to say we did this strategy, we did that and whatever, but really it's about mankind, humankind, you know, and kindness and energy and supporting each other and that. And it's really simple, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I, I'm probably oversimplifying it, but in my heart, it's about making sure our furnaces are okay and that we reach out. So let's talk a bit about that. So what have you seen a specific uh, groups or communities that have really, really uh, suffered, that their furnace is out uh, since the lockdown, that, that actually, maybe you've already talked about it, but maybe for podcast listeners, it would be quite good to, to hear a bit more about uh, those that you would see from your from your perspective. Uh, yeah, okay, we've had a bad time. We need to reach out there and help out. Is so, there... are you, so are you asking me how we reach out? No, no, is, is there a specific uh, a community might be like it, it might be uh, users from that like you would say that have a disability, people that were living in poverty. You would say they've taken a, a massive hit. You you have noticed from your perspective, okay, that community really needs help, and you you might have uh, done a lot of that already, or you're still doing it. You know. Uh, so uh, you, I'm I'm assuming what we're talking about here is a targeted approach. If I was to kind of look at that, yeah, and I think um. I think we do target in our communications. Mm -hmm. So we, we're just going to be putting out our Christmas newsletter. And um, we have a client base that we work with. Um, so for our support team, that's a referral process. So that's already targeted and we will work with them. But in terms of reaching out to communities for housing advice, yeah, we, we have, we've got a newsletter go out and we also have um, a winter campaign and we will be doing a, um, a volunteer count on who's on the streets and, and why they're on the streets in January. And Christmas is always a time of concern um, for everybody and, and, and rightfully so. But we often find that it's after Christmas. So families are often really good at keeping it together for, for, for all the right reasons. And then the tensions of may, maybe economic constraints or there's um, some something's happened in the family that puts tension on the family. Chris, after Christmas, January is a time when when we start to see different different communities or different groups of people feeling mm -hmm. it more. So um, one of them is you'll find some. So last year I worked with um, with um, the street pastors. I went out for one night for them to experience what they did to try and understand the community that would come towards us, but much earlier down the line. And you know, we 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 met one gentleman who had never been on the street, or or um, he had a relationship breakdown. It happened. It was January. It happened, and there he was. And we could help him on the street. So we're going to go back out with that community because if we look at the most at risk, for whatever reasons you're on the street, and you are at risk, mm -hmm. and you're at risk from cold temperatures, you're at risk from potential abuse, you're at you're at risk from all sorts of of, of, of things so that would be our our target is looking at those who are who are at risk now it might be that someone is on the street and chooses to be on the street and that that can be the case but the choices that they 
they have then and the, is important to recognize, but it's also letting them know where they can go if they choose not to be there anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so Crazy. that's few and far between in Fife, but but they are some people who are in that position. But so we're hoping that by our winter campaign, and we will also be passing out the Pass Me On card, and we'll be sending this out to other stakeholders. And it's a it's a credit card of emergency numbers, so oh. that if you find yourself in a position, then you can actually get a know where to get a quick call. You know, it's a, generally it's an access to to numbers because these days most people have mobile phones, or mm-hmm. they know where they can go to. So we're going to be doing sending these cards out to other stakeholders. So that we target, so they target because we don't know everybody, obviously. But our stakeholders, in terms of other partners, will probably know people who should be targeted or at risk that they work with. So that that's a small gesture, but the small gesture starts an initiation, an initiation of we think I I think I might need help, or we know that you might need help. Here's this card, phone this number. So that's mm-hmm. how we get around that targeted approach. So that that's one example. That's great. We'll make sure to uh, share the numbers of this as well as part of the podcast. We'll do. We'll uh, do. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. I'm just making a note. So that sounds like a really good example. Is there any good examples like that you you would say you, you've seen since the, the lockdown of like organizations working together to try and deal with this uh, absolute mayhem that has, <laughs> that has happened since? Well, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll even go bigger than five. Um, so we also were, sit on national groups and um, one of the national groups we sit on, um, the Simon community in Glasgow, uh-huh. we've connected about four times for, to get people back to Fife. They've been homeless on the street in Glasgow and we work with them to make sure they get a place of safety back to, to back to Fife. Wow. I mean, that that's never been done before in, in our experience uh-huh. um, in such a way, but COVID has made us think much bigger than working with with local partners. Of course, we work with local partners, but to have that connection with um, with the Simon community um, is, is phenomenal. Um, and we also had one person that we worked with to send up to Aberdeen. So, um, oh. you know, the Aberdeen foyer, we got in contact with them so that they, when they got there, we paid for their bus ticket to get them there. And then when they arrived there, there was someone there to support them as opposed to trying to get home on their own. So. That's the kind of reaching out that we're doing at the moment. And, and you know, if you take every individual as a, a, an equal um, person to be dealing with in terms of supporting them, mm-hmm. then what can we make, what impact can we make for that individual to get them home? So instead of net always looking at groups, if we look at that individual, what can we make, what can we do that makes a difference to get them home? Mm-hmm. Then that changes the way we work because you work with your heart and your mind. And that starts to make real, real big things happen. So, you know, last, so two Fridays ago, we had a lady who um, phoned up at four o'clock on a Friday. It's always just when you're thinking the the weekend's coming around. And she said, "Um, I've got no heat and I've got no food. I've tried really hard all week to overcome this. What can you do? And so we got our two teams, our housing advice team who knew about her, you know, her legal rights and, what she should do in terms of going forward and our support team to come together on a very rainy blizzardy night and, you know, and try and get to her through the floods and whatever. And, you know, we thought out of the box and what happened is instead of just trying to do it ourselves, we phoned Tesco's and they delivered her food. Wow. And we paid for that. And then we got a taxi service to help her get to her, her pharmacy that she needed on the day. And then we also got her a fuel card as well through another through another partner. They they were they were living in her community, and we got them to deliver her 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 fuel card. So hey, we were okay. Wow, wow. That's, that's really good. It's amazing what you can do when you think. Yeah. I, I was saying to the team at the time, we've got to think like NASA. <laughs> we've got yeah, to get a big team down. <laughs> big, really big, yeah. There's no, yeah. there's no false know? barriers anywhere. Yeah. But, so it was a truly amazing. And of course, I mean, that person, there was, not, there was another example similar. They wrote back saying, thank you. Th- 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 thank you so much because I was going to have to go through another weekend with no food and no fuel. Mm-hmm. And no one, no one should live with no fuel and, and food. It's as simple as that. And not, and not in Scotland. No. <laughs> yeah. 
that, that's an amazing. Th thank you for sharing that. that. That's an amazing example of actually, we 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 should be able to do this more regularly. But it's actually it's a bit like homelessness before as well. As you say, uh, if someone was in Glasgow, they would stay in Glasgow usually. That that be that be the end of a story. Not actually creating the link to come back to FIFO before. So so that's. Definitely something that we've noticed, all the other people that we spoke to about this idea that actually um, we got to get out of habits, yes, <laughs> yes. break the habits and actually really help the situation really. So that's, that's pretty interesting. So uh, that must be really good in some ways to the team to actually learn to do what, as you say, it's a vocation in many ways. Yes, uh, because I think, uh, I, think you're, I think what you're touching on there is Obviously, we were a professional organization and we know we're a charity that's governed by the care inspector and we have things we must do and we always will do them. But those sometimes can drive our decisions that are not as um, bold and brave and courageous for the individual. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can get really sort of um, risk adverse. It might seem risky for you, but mm -hmm. in actual fact, that's not what the care inspector wants. We, if we truly put the person at the center, mm -hmm. then we start with them and their needs and we we work towards solving their needs, knowing all the good stuff that the care inspector had asked us to do, work with dignity and respect. We do that all the time. But instead of making that the modus operandi, if we do this person-centered stuff, which we do, and we leave that to come through because that's what we do all the time, and focus on the on on supporting the person, not to fix the problem, but to help them resolve their problem. Mm -hmm. Then we find a, we find ways that are liberating, and we can see where we can make community work better for us. You know, mm -hmm. and I think I think that's something that COVID has helped us to think about much deeper than than just referring into community networks. You know, I think we can mm -hmm. often find ourselves using a referral into community networks. But what we did there was build good, good humankind in the community to allow community to flourish. So it's a little bit different, isn't it? Yeah. And then the network will grow itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. people want to bring forward. I mean, Tesco's, I mean, I'm not trying to name them. They just happen to be the ones that were there in the, in the local area mm -hmm. where they were. But they just, they just saw that that person was in need and they could give a hand. And I think Christmas coming around, your heart goes out a little bit more for that as well. So, so yeah, so um, yeah. yeah, it's it's just amazing if you start off with your heart and and remember your mind in that in terms of your good practice, you start to you start to resolve problems and and crises in a very different way. You arrive at the same place, no doubt, but the but the journey you took and the people on the journey changes ever so slightly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you good. Involve, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. You involve people right there. Like, mm -hmm. I said Tesco was there. You're involved. You're part yes, of the story. Yes. You're, not, you're not like somewhere else. You're here. So, yeah, there's this kind of connection that, that, that grows from that. Without judgment, you know, mm -hmm. um, without judgment. This is what we could do. We were we were that NASA team. This is what we do. This was the resources available for us. And, and, and here we go. Let's have a go. <laughs> yeah. That sounds really positive. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's good that you know a supermarket was able to help that way for you, and it's a it's a it's a business that you might be able to like try and make a connection with later on. They're able to step up and help again for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we need to uh, we need to reach out to them and follow that up. Um, you know, with a nice Christmas card to say thanks. You know, that's they're on our they're on our list. <laughs> on the good list <laughs> yeah, <it's a> good <laughs> list. <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, just see we think then uh we tend to ask that to a lot of organizations it's like what at this time would be the most of help to you as an organization what what because there's a bit of uh us telling to, to other communities what kind of help you give to them but it's it works as a, as a two-way thing as you say it's like we we have to involve each other into this so uh wh what could be of help to you at this stage it, it might be anything like other organizations needed to you know they needed to find new premises so we we made sure that there's a codec about that so things like that so at this stage for you uh at this well this is like having a christmas list of of, of what would i like for christmas yeah 
<laughs> Get your I, list. I don't have it. But... <laughs> I don't have I don't have it. I don't have a go to, but but I post for this on. That's what I do. <laughs> so, so I I have a huge Christmas list. So I'm not going to bore you to tears with it. But the, so if I start with pers- people first, right? If I start with people first, for the team, time to breathe and relax and be mindful of what's been achieved. That that would be the first thing, and and to be mindful of who did we connect with that actually gave us our energy that I spoke about and helped us see a crisis through to a, a good a good, uh, a good outcome. So that would be the first one, having just that reflective time mm-hmm. and, just, and just feel good about what we do as opposed to forgetting ourselves, you know? Um, the second one, I would love, we work across the whole of five and we have teams you know, in New Volunteer House, which is in Kirkcaldy, we have head office and they're out doing everything. I would love to have a central place where we can come together. Mm. You know, and I, and I, we, you know, instead of having a little offices here and there, I'd love a big office that we can all celebrate and do our Nassau thing all every day, right? <laughs> like, cause, cause Nassau's hard to work, hard to work when you're not all in front of each other. Mm-hmm. And and I think then that would give more of us a warm support to everybody that we are truly feeling the the, the getting it together type thing, you know. Um, and it's just easy to talk to people if you're all in one room, isn't it? We mm-hmm. we found digital helpful, but it is it is challenging, isn't it? It, it is challenging. So so those are the two big big ideas. Um, and then the other one, it comes. We're time poor. Someone uh, a, a, a wonderful woman I worked with, um who is now president of the of the Royal College in Glasgow, she said to me, Karen, the problem with it is we can't knit time. Hmm. Um, <laughs> and so what are we going to do if we can't knit time? That's what she used to always say to me. And what a simple message that was. But I just always remember Jackie saying, you can't knit time. But I we do have to make time to, to understand what works well mm-hmm. And to be able to communicate and share with others what works well and why. Yeah. So I guess the overall one is more breathing time to experience mindfulness, fill up our energy, but also to understand why things work well and what more of that good stuff we could do and 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 celebrate it. We don't get time to celebrate. We need to make more time to celebrate. So yeah, those those are my top three for for. Okay. For Christmas. Okay, so um, are, are you sending a letter to Santa? Are you sending a letter? Because, you know, I'll try and see what happens. The wrong time is I'll ever send a letter to Santa, but I might just do that. I, I try. I try and say this. See what happens. I think <laughs> okay. that's definitely good to have a bit more breathing uh, space. Stop rushing already. Stop rushing. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, just everyone calm down. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That that sounds a, a very good call out. So. And so, I understand the premises of actually being able to, to, to be together, mm. work together and, and, and work things out. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, mm-hmm. that, that's definitely something that we've heard quite a lot, to be honest, as well. Uh, it seems to be a, a problem. And uh, so, yes, we'll share it. And we, we put the call out as we post this and say, like, if you have great premises and uh, well, you go, you got a, a team that might be really interested in the new year. <laughs> <laughs> No, so make sure I put my milk and cookies on, on under the tree and the cat up for the reindeer. <laughs> so if anybody wanted to volunteer for a frontline frontline five, how would how would they go about contacting you? So at the moment we're reviewing our volunteering because um, we we are because we deal with with such private uh, cases, um, it's it's not easy to have volunteers involved. Mm-hmm. And there's quite a lot of training that we need to do in terms of making sure that we we deal with things in a sensitive way. So at the moment, we focus any volunteering. Um, obviously, and they play a big part, and and they should get an equal thanks in terms of their work. But we often work with volunteers for fundraising and and to try and bring out the message about homelessness and getting people to understand that homelessness. It should not be stigmatized. That that's where the real volunteering could really make an impact. Is if we right. could send out a universal message about don't don't judge people because you see them on the street. 
you you don't know how they arrived there mm -hmm. um and you don't know if they're even there for just maybe half a day you know it was a blimp in their lives don't don't make that the thing of their lives you know it, it could be a, a moment in time or it could be something where we have to understand much deeper on on that the person's support and needs that they have at the time so mm -hmm. so yeah so that that's um that's where we would um have volunteers and um we're, we're going to be having to look at our our volunteering strategy if you like um to to understand how we can gauge communities much more the pass me on card that i spoke about we we, we ran a campaign last year on that and and we actually had businesses in St. Andrews and, and Kirkcaldy and what that using the card and passing it out so that if they saw someone near their business on the streets, they were helping out to, to support, yeah. support and give that card out to people so they knew where to get a place of safety. So it's that kind of volunteering that, that we're looking for is, is the good heartness of, of that versus formal volunteering. That's where we, we want to build a community that understands homelessness um, or communities that build, understand homelessness and that they they actually help to combat stigma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but still, it's a taboo around it. It's like actually, uh, it's not seen as as you say as part of a bigger picture of a person. What's happening in their lives? It's saying like, oh, you're homeless, uh, and then the focus is just on that. It was mm -hmm. nice of their of their of their life. So yeah, um, it is traditionally there was there was a lot of work on on stigma and homelessness and veterans is that still something that you you, you do in five or you've noticed uh, so stigma is something that we work with particularly with young people we, we're, we're trying to take a generational approach to it that if we do our community work in, at the time of of doing campaigns then that that works but mm -hmm. I, I do think there is um we need to up the game on doing a great much big louder voice campaign on stigma and homelessness i i think I think if that's one, you know, that's another part for the Christmas list, isn't it? <laughs> Is to have some backing, some backing to to do a, a media campaign that starts to get a wider reach because we can only work with with you know with the numbers that we have. Our voice is, is limited in what we can do. Okay. Um, but if we could do, if we could build a big campaign um, for for that, that would be fantastic, you know. And it can be, it could be it could be amazing if we all pull together a lot of Community, communities and organizations pull together to do stigma and homelessness and, and other and other forms of stigma too. Th that would be a super campaign to, to run. So so there you go, Eric. I, I place my 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 wish list again back to you to revise <laughs> my my letter. So you have to scribble it out and then put stigma campaign as well. Yeah. That that's what I, I would say that's what's needed now in five ever, more than ever now. More than ever. Okay. Thank you for that. I scribe it, I put it online, uh, and I'll email it to Santa and see what happens. Thank you. <laughs> Before next year. <laughs> so we're coming to the end of um, our interview. So, Karen, is there any last thing that you know you want to put a shout out for? You know, um, any like fundraising that you might be doing that's coming up or camp or campaigns that are coming up in the new year so um we're, we're going to be doing our winter campaign and and we we that's a very quiet one that's not a, a big a big shout out but um so we will so just to let organizations know they'll probably receive a letter from us explaining the January work that we'll be doing in terms of being out in the streets um, and for one day we'll do a one day count um, but we do have fundraising um, in terms of and if you go to our website at www.frontline5.co.uk then you will you'll get quite a lot of, of information on on the, the, the just giving page etc that we're doing but I suppose the other thing to highlight is that as, as an organization like many many third sector organizations we don't stand still um, and we've just published um, a, a, re a research uh, paper on uh, looking at LGBT community needs in Fife and homelessness. Mm -hmm. um, and that has um, proven to, to really highlight the issue of stigma, um, but also the, the specific needs that LGBT plus communities have in, in rural areas 
and, and some of the limitations and barriers to services. So that little bit of research that we've done is to is to actually forward practice. Uh, Frontline 5 doesn't do research for research sake. It looks at a particular key issue or a, char a characteristic um, and looks at, well, is there something more that we could do for, for this group? And we've done that. So if you go to our, our www.frontline5.co.uk and go into our media section and publications, you'll see the early release paper of, of, that, um, of that research. And I just want to say a thanks to, to Fife Centre for Equality, who's going to help us put that into an easy reader form. Uh, so for everybody to, to, well, more people to get access to that. So, so that would be the shout out that I would put today. But also, um, thanks. Thanks for this today. Oh. Thanks for the communities. Thanks for donors. Thanks for our board. Thanks for other organization. I just, if I could give a warm hug, how do you do that verbally? A warm hug verbally. Um, <laughs> Don't know. I haven't got that one yet, but, but it's there invented. in my heart. It's there in my heart, and uh, and yeah. So so a big thanks to everybody. So yeah, Thank and you Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Indeed, I, and uh, you know one one big wish. Um, maybe that twenty twenty one is better than twenty twenty. Yes. That would be great for everyone. <laughs> well, I think for a conversation like this, we're already on the better side, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> that sounds good. I would okay. de definitely link that report as well as part of the podcast. So the link will be further down of the video as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, well, that's us come to the end of our last episode for the year. So thank you, Karen, for being part of our podcast series. Um, I'd just like to put a, a big, thank, big thank you to all the other organizations that have came on for our first season and we're going to be back next year for season two so please look out for more interviews with and, people from around five and i just want to say a big a big well done to lisa to having made the first series of podcasts ever series one is complete so well done <laughs> I <will be> <laughs> you, you made someone who was absolutely scared scared of doing this today very easy so thank you so anybody else who's going to do it um it's a joy a complete joy you guys are fabulous excellent oh, thank you, so thank you. <laughs> all the best <laughs> i asked you as well but i will just wave for now because that works <laughs> all the best bye bye bye, bye. bye.